Okay, 2-1 is solving one-step equations, and 2-2 we're also doing today, solving two-step equations. I know you can solve one-step equations in your head, but we need to start using the correct properties so that we can solve them um, using multi-step equations or when we get to variables on both sides. So addition property says if a equals b, then a plus c equals b plus c. Whatever we add to one side of the equation, we can add to the other side equation, and they will remain equal. We can also do that with subtraction. So subtraction property, if a equals b, then a minus c equals b minus c. Again, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we always have to do to the other side of the equation. So when we have an equation, the first thing we want to do is isolate the variable term. So the variable here is x, so I usually put a box around it. I want to get rid of then the positive 2. So we use our inverse operation. Inverse of addition is subtraction. Again, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. So when I do that, my 2's cancel. So I cross them out, and now I get 6 minus 2 is 4. The only thing left on this side is x, so x equals 4. If we look at a second example, I have c minus 4 equals 9. Again, you want to isolate the variable term, so I put my box around c. Now I'm getting rid of the minus 4, because it's the only thing left on that side. So the inverse operation of minus 4 is add 4. And again, whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do the other. If you want, you can put the equal sign in here, because 4 equals 4. And now 4's will cancel. All I have left on the left side is C, and 9 plus 4 is 13. The other two properties in this section, first is multiplication, and second is our division property. Multiplication property says if a equals b, then a times c equals b times c. Again, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the other. Division property, if a equals b, then a divided by c equals b divided by c. Again, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation. So an example using multiplication and division I start with 8, negative 8n equals negative 64. I want to get rid of the negative 8. There's no sign in between the negative 8 and n, so I know it's multiplication. So that means the inverse property is division. So I have to divide both sides. Make sure if there's a sign with your number that you carry that sign down so you're dividing both sides by negative 8 which then the negative 8's cancel I just have n negative 64 divided by negative 8 again two negatives always make it a positive or negative divided by negative is always positive so I get n equals 8. If I have another example m divided by 7 equals 12. I have to get m by itself, so I'm getting rid of the division sign. So the, the inverse operation is multiplication. And when I put the multiplication down, I always put it underneath, so I can just have it set up as a multiplication problem. If you want to put your little x there, I always put the dot. But 7 over 7 is just 1m, so now on the left side I just have m. And on the right side, when I take 7 times 2 is 14, carry the 1, 7 times 1 is 7, add the 1 is 8, so m equals 84. And I've solved all the type of problems in 2-1. So that means we're ready to move on to 2-2. 2-2 two two. Two two is solving two-step equations. So I'm going to be doing two processes in the same problem. But again, the first thing we want to do is isolate the variable term. 
So that's right here. I have 3n minus 4 equals 11. So wherever the variable is, I want to put the box around it. I'm leaving it alone. I have to get rid of minus 4. So just like we did on the other problem, we have to use the inverse operations. So the opposite of minus is add 4 to both sides. When I've added 4 to both sides, negative 4 plus 4 or 4 minus 4, that cancels. So I bring down my 3n. 11 plus 4 is 15. So I have now gotten where I have 3n equals 15. So again, I isolate the variable and solve. So there's my variable. So 3 times n equals 15. So the inverse of multiplication is division. So I want to divide both sides by 3 so that the 3's cancel. Leaves me with 1n, which is just n. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and we've solved the problem. Our next type of problem still takes two steps to solve, but it looks a little different. The process and the steps are still the same. We want to isolate the variable term, which is right here. So I'm leaving that a divided by 5 alone. I have that I'm subtracting 18 it will equal 2. So when I leave this alone, that means I have to get rid of the minus 18. So the inverse operation is add 18, add 18. So 18 minus 18 is 0, so that's gone. So I'm going to bring down the a divided by 5. 18 plus 2 is 20. So now I have a divided by 5, or a over 5, equals 20. I always remember any fraction is a division problem, so it's easier for me to do the inverse of division is multiplication. So I want to multiply by 5. Again, multiply by 5 here. So 5 over 5 makes 1a. 5 times 20 is 100. And I have solved the problem. So again, you did two steps. You added 18, and we came back and multiplied. Those were our two steps. So the last type of problem in this section could look like a fraction. So y minus 4 divided by 2 equals 10. So here I don't want to start with my addition and subtraction. Here's my variable term. But that whole y minus 4 is divided by 2, so the best thing we could do is get rid of that division by multiplying by 2. So I multiply the left side by 2, so that cancels. And now I have y minus 4. 2 times 10 is 20. So I have y minus 4 equals 20. And that should look familiar. You should know what to do with that step. I want to add 4 to both sides because that's my inverse function, operation. And when I add 4, I get the 4 is canceling, so y equals 24. And now I have learned all the different types of two-step equations that you're going to be doing today.